When you look in the mirror, how honest are you? Hi, I'm Kirsten D. Samuel, Aftershock Recovery Coach. In today's video, we'll unpack how to look at four ways to get honest with yourself and what's bothering you as you recover from your husband's pornography addiction. One of the most difficult parts of recovery is telling yourself the truth. It's easier to lie to yourself, to avoid it, to not look in a mirror and face pesky personal issues. But a person who desires to heal from abuse and trauma and betrayal has to get honest with herself first. God tells us to take care of what's blinding us before we try to help or correct others. Winston Churchill put it this way, Criticism may not be agreeable, but it is necessary. It fulfills the same function as pain in the human body. It calls attention to an unhealthy state of things. It's time to get honest with yourself. Your success at this task may depend on your stage of recovery. Self-examination when you're wounded may not be possible in the initial stages of recovery. Because at that point, when your heart feels like raw ground meat, you don't have the emotional health to deal with more than the initial aftershocks. So, first order of business is get help to get your feet back on the ground. My honest personal evaluation began after several months of coaching and counseling. I had to get my feet under me and be at a place where everything wasn't a crisis. My clients who are ready for this next step in their healing process can accept some pushback on their level of honesty with themselves. For instance, I don't like it when he ignores me. Well, do you always respond to him when he asks a question? I don't believe a word he says. He gets so frustrated because he tells me he's changed, but I can't believe him. I totally understand your concerns and lack of trust. How honest are you with him these days? Honesty can sting, but remember, pain reveals an existing problem. Conversations like this happen once my client and I have worked through the, after, the first stages of the aftershock recovery method. We work up to it. The raw wounds need to begin to heal before we can move into the next phase of healing. So how do you look in the mirror with honesty? Or maybe it's tell three truths and no lie. Well, number one, listen to what you say. Our words reveal what's already in our minds and hearts. We speak what we feel. Those words can cause damage or care. Challenge yourself to listen to the words you speak to others and yourself. The truth with your self phase of healing requires you to evaluate your words. How would you classify them? How do you speak about yourself? How do you speak to yourself? How do you speak about others? What's going unsaid? Number two, omit gross generalizations. Using words like all, always, never, and everyone, these words lump a group into one category. Let me give you an example. All girls prefer to wear pink. Not true. I wear pink at times, but I actually prefer to wear blue. Your husband may have said something dishonest, but to generalize his speech as always lying isn't accurate or fair. When we've been deeply wounded, we speak out of our pain. And it's very simple to drop in unfounded, generalized statements to cover our hurt or to attempt to inflict hurt. Pay attention to your words. Listen for those gross generalizations. Number three, overlook slight offenses. I really struggled with this one. For months after Dave revealed his pornography addiction, everything he did triggered a, an offense. I bristled at most actions and words because I didn't trust him at all. If he forgot something, I justified my anger that he did it on purpose to hurt me more. When in fact, he just forgot, like we all do. It's time to stop taking offense. Learning to trust him again took conscious choices to take him at his word. Then I watched his actions to see if what he said was true. So often we want the pain and healing to occur quickly or at least in a specified timeline. Boy, I wish that were true. But healing this level of damage in a relationship takes hard work and time. Unquantified time. Repetitive healing action time. Plenty of time to overlook slight offenses. Whenever I caught myself taking offense again, I had to look in the mirror and talk truth. What expectation wasn't met? 
Was I holding on to anything out of fear of getting hurt again? What was really going on in me? Number four, key into positive actions. Remember when you taught your children how to tie their shoes? It took repetitive practice and patience on their part, on their part and yours. Each time they got close or got it done, you praised them, didn't you? We all need to hear affirmation, especially when we are learning or relearning something. Now, after you've discovered your husband's porn addiction, the last thing you want to do is call out the good positive behavior in him, right? Well, we tend to forget the things we once enjoyed about this man we chose to be with. It's time to look in the mirror daily and call out one positive action you observed. Then, thank your husband for that behavior. If you can't do this, then ask yourself what's holding you back. Don't shrink from the answer. Don't shrink from the answer. It's a key to your healing. Well, are you ready to look in the mirror and unpack some honest self-examination? Well, this does stretch you. It also frees you to be who you are. It opens your heart and mind to release the issues you've kept hidden for so long. You'll find you can breathe again. Author Chet Scott, in Becoming Built to Lead, 365 Daily Disciplines to Master the Art of Living, says that we all need vision correction. He says, your problem is your problem. Your problem is not another person. If you're trying to mediate a problem with a teammate, trying to salvage your marriage through counseling, or working on any other relationship in your world, your problem will not get better until you fix your focus. It's time to correct your vision as you look in the mirror. Stop looking beyond the person reflected back to you. Face her head on, smile, and promise her that together you'll discover how speaking truth to yourself frees you up to be who you really are. Evaluate each criticism as revealing the pain already there. Now that you're no longer blind to it, you take healing action. Then you can tell yourself three truths and no lie. And you can find compassion for those near you who find honesty difficult. Because you did too. Do you need help finding the truth? Getting your feet under you? I'd be happy to help. Just hop on over to kirstendsamuel.com and click the blue button. I promise to speak honestly.